Welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu L'asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. Let me find the... I'm going to have to do something else. Excuse me for talking to myself. And let's go here. Okay. Let's make sure I have the right place. Uh, we did this, so we're on to the next page. Here we are. Right. So we were told before uh, that, uh, and I just need to ask you to mute if, unless you're actually speaking. Um, and uh, we had started by a warning being given to the Jewish people to uh, not practice the habits and the behaviors of Egypt, nor the behaviors of the land of Canaan, where they were going. And, and so that was a negative statement, right? Should not follow their laws. And it says, et mishpatai ta'asu, you shall practice, you shall perform my, uh, my statutes or my, yeah, my laws, the et chukotai tishmeru, and my edicts you shall observe, la lechet bahem, to go in them. By the way, you see, to walk in them, and the idea of walking in law, uh, so we've got the term halacha, right? The way in which to walk. Ani Hashem Elokechem, I, the Lord, am your Elohim. I am your Elohim. So some lovely Rashi on all of this. So, et mishpatai, et mishpatai ta'asu, Right, you shall uh, practice my judgments, my my laws, and Rashi says mishpatim are elu dvarim. These are statements ha'omurim b'Torah that are stated in the Torah explicitly be mishpat in connection with just behavior. She'ilu lo ne'amaru, that even if they had not been stated explicitly in the Torah, ha'yu kidai le'omran, it still would have been worth saying them. Meaning that this is the kind of legal stuff that just makes sense in terms of setting up a community or a civilization or a nation, that these are essential laws of justice. That, that make sense, that make sense, that are required in order to have a just society. That's what he's saying here. So what's the difference? The et chukotai tishmeru, and you shall observe my, guard my chukim. And why does it say to guard? Here it says to go, which is sort of a natural way of walking, right? But guarding, dvarim she'im, Shehem Gzeirat Hamelech. We are talking here about laws that are, in fact, edicts of the king, are sovereign edicts. Sheyetzahara, that a person's evil inclination, Mashiv Alehem, argues with them, argues with these edicts. Lama Lanu Leshomram, what practical, uh, what practical, uh, you know, results do we have uh, to guard these things, to keep them? Why, why should we bother keeping them? The umot ha'olam, and not only that, but the other nations, the non, non-Jewish non people, mashivin uh, alehem, argue with them, uh, that is to, with Jewish people who want to follow these particular edicts. Egon, for example, here we go. Achilat chazir, eating pig, ulevishat shatnez, and wearing garments that are mixtures of wool and flax. Give me one moment. I need to do a little bit of housekeeping here. Okay, of wool and flax, 
and because there's a prohibition in the Torah to wear garments that are made of a combination of wool and flax. They are in fact part of a priest's garments, but not, or the high priest's garments, but we are not supposed to wear those things. The taharat mechatat, and likewise the purification using the waters of lustration, referring to a person who may have come in contact with a corpse. And as we've mentioned already, that kind of impurity is a, like the greatest impurity one can experience. And it requires a seven day process, uh, which includes using the ashes of the red heifer and being sprinkled on the third and seventh day with the ashes of this red heifer in order to achieve purity. So you can see that all of us are pretty much within this framework of impurity. However, there's no practical reason as to why these particular laws should be enforced or that we should observe them. And that's the point that Rashi is making. Lechach ne'emar. And for this reason, it adds Ani Hashem. That's why it adds the words, I am the Lord at the end of the statement, Gzerotai Aleichem, my Gzerot, my edicts are upon you, meaning that we are obliged to observe these divine edicts. I Atem Rishaim, you have no permission, Lihipater, to move away from them, to go away from them. And or to to abrogate them, to abrogate them. Lalechet by him to walk in them. Al tipater mitocham. In other words, the idea of emphasizing. Uh, obviously, if their laws, we're supposed to observe them. So why this emphasis here? Al tipater mitocham. Don't let them go. Don't quit them. Don't give them up. Shelo tomar. That is to say, and here he's talking in general about Jewish law and the whole body of halacha. Shelo tomar, that you should not say to yourselves, lamadati chokhmat Yisrael, I've learned the, uh, the, the wisdom of the Jewish people of Israel, in other words, Torah knowledge, knowledge involving Torah, so now I'm going to go and study other kinds of the, the, the wisdom of the nations. And my obviously, uh, I don't take this personally in, in its purest sense to say that it's, you're not allowed to study other subjects. I don't think actually that that really has been the understanding of this. The point is, he said, to give up the one for the other. In other words, one at least should always keep one foot in Jewish, in Torah study and studying Torah and, and not give that up entirely to go and study other subjects. So it's just, it's just saying, you know, that if you totally give up the study of Torah, then obviously you're abandoning it. You're ab abandoning one of the essential elements of observing being a, an observant Jew, someone who's actually practicing these things. But as far as I know, I mean, for example, Maimonides couldn't find someone who more knowledgeable, who also studied medicine and astronomy and other kinds of things. So essentially, it's saying, how do we spend our time and to make sure that the Torah doesn't depart from us? And depart means, of course, completely, that we abandon the study of Torah. Going on. Ushmartem et chukotai, and you shall guard, literally, it should, you should uh, uh, observe a, a guard, my chukim, my chukim, the it mashpatai, and my laws, and we've had these definitions of what we mean by chukim and mishpatim, the distinction between them. Asher yaaseh, and look at what it's going to say, otam ha'adam, that a person, an individual, should perform them v'chai bahem, and live through them. Ani Hashem, I am the Lord. So let's take a look at what he says here. 
okay. Ushmartem et chukotai. It says, and you shall observe my chukim. So notice it says uh, here, it says chukotai uh, tishmaru. It says that there up here in the previous verse, uh, and doesn't say anything. Um, it says ve'et mishpatai and my commandments. So here we go. Ushmartem et chukotai. So it seems to be. Uh, you know, re redundant, right? You shall guard my chukim. Lirabot, so the reason for this apparent redundancy is to include sha'ar digtuke haparsha, to include other details of this particular subject, this particular parsha, shelo parat hakatuv bahem, which scripture did not specify. In other words, all the attendant laws that go into these various uh, basic laws. Davar acher. So another interpretation. Liten shmira va'asiya. To, to make sure that we both observe and perform. So observe would be to learn, I would understand by that, right? To guard laws in this case, I think means to study them, to learn them, to understand them, the asiya, and to perform them, to actually perform them. La chukim, for the chukim, ushmira asiya, and likewise, to observe and to perform la mishpatim, also for the mishpatim. Le fi shelo natan el asiya, and the reason why is because the verses up to this point have not have only given performance la mishpatim to the mishpatim ushmira la chukim, and observing to the chukim. So it's saying we. It's not just a theoretical kind of thing. It's also a practical thing. So we see here uh, already the idea of both the, uh, uh, the so to speak, uh, the theoretical side of learning about these laws and then the application of these laws so as to actually put them in force. And, and that really is actually a very profound uh, and perhaps um, unique element of the degree to which Judaism uh, talks about the application of one's knowledge into, into that is to through the, the application of mitzvot and the performance of mitzvot and taking that idea very seriously in terms of its application. And of course, it also subsequently gives rise to all the, the, the difficulties and the questions that come about whenever you try to apply a theory into reality. The chai bahem, all right, and live through them. And this is also, so we are learning actually some, some interesting principles regarding, regarding uh, traditional Judaism. Le olam haba, he says, what this has to do is immortality. That through the practice of these particular laws of these of the Torah, one will survive, one will become immortal. Why do we say this? She'im tomar ba olam hazeh, because were you to say that this applies to this world, v'halo sofo hulamut, the fact is that it's one of the two certainties in this world. We, invent, we are in fact mortal. So clearly we could understand this to refer to this world in the sense that by practicing the Torah, by, by working very hard to apply our knowledge of Torah into our everyday lives, that actually it, it, it boosts the, our health. That it is a very that it tries to tries to provide a really healthy way in which to live our lives, uh, and we could understand it that way. But the tradition is, and Rashi is quoting the tradition; he's not cooking up this himself. That we understand that this is our way to gain immortality, um, and this I think also something that is not necessarily unique 
but as something that I think is quite precious about our tradition, is that we don't just count on it, that we actually have an opportunity to gain immortality and to deserve it, to actually earn immortality. And I think that's, uh, it's to me, that is a, it can be a great ethical principle. And certainly as you tend to get older and recognize just how brief life is, it, it might be a much stronger motivating factor. Ani Hashem, so again, this is like the seal, the seal of God. Ne'eman l'shalem schar. I can be relied on to reward, to pay the reward to do this. Um, why like why, yes. why in, the, in uh, the prayer book uh, for High Holy Days, it says, Kien banu ma'asin. Right. How do right. you earn immortality? Right. So good, wonderful, a wonderful question. So it is, what it's doing is appealing to God from the point of view of grace. In other words, it's not taking credit for what we're trying to do. So there's a, there's a dynamic, let's say an emotional dynamic of, on the one hand, understanding that we actually are given this capability, but at the same time, not to be arrogant about it and feel that we can pat ourselves on the back and say, you know, look how good we are. Um, I, I think it is a matter of trying to act in a modest kind of way and to be modest about our accomplishments. And to, to it's, it's an antidote, you might say, to arrogance. But it's not necessarily saying that we are devoid of any kinds of good, good behavior at all. I don't think it's saying that. So that's how I understand it, that it's trying to create a, an atmosphere of humility as we come before God and us and realize and recognize that God is judging us. Yes, Golda. Uh, it's not a guarantee either. We still have to be proactive. We still have to do what we're supposed to do. It's not like, you know, believe in, believe in this and you will be saved forever. Right. We have to constantly be doing and being active and doing the right things. It's it's a lifetime process. Right. Absolutely, Golda. Good point. There's no point at which you can say, I'm done. Right. I have nothing more to do. There is just so much to learn. There is are so many op opportunities. We can look at these 613 mitzvahs, uh, many of which, of course, we cannot practice simply because there is no temple or for those of us who are not living in the land of Israel. And we can look at those things as either a burden or we can look at those things as an opportunity as actually something very precious. And in fact, of course, there are statements that say that Torah, the value of Torah is more than the finest gold. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, just, just um, you know, use the, the participant little block so I can see if you've raised your hand. Okay, going on. Ish, ish. So it says, every person, right? Ish, ish. Literally, it says, a man, a man. But you're going to see how Rashi translates this. Oh, before I go on with that, let me go back and take a look, by the way, at how Unculus, I made a little note here. So it says, this is Unculus, right? Very early, much earlier than Rashi. And it says, alma, and he shall live through them for eternal, eternally, right? For eternal life. So just, you know, just to show you how far back this idea goes. But let me now back in, into our, what we were doing before I interrupted. So every man, el kol she'er b'saro, to his, any of his relatives, lo tikrevu, you shall draw, not draw near, legalot erva, 
to reveal nakedness. And this is, of course, a euphemistic way of talking about incest and intimacy, sexual intimacy. Ani, again, this all start, these stop with Ani Adonai, I am the Lord. So here there is a general statement saying that incest is something that is forbidden. Lord Tikravu, you shall not draw close. Lahazhir, so Lahazhir, because it says you plural, right? You plural shall not draw close. Lahazir hanikeva kezachar. This is to warn females just like males. Males and females are included in this prohibition. Lechach ne'emar, and for this reason, lash ne'emar lashon rabim, it states it in the plural, lo tikravu, you plural shall not draw close. Ani, again, when it ends with ani Hashem, it means ne'eman l'shalem schar. I can be relied on to, to give reward for this. And it's, it's interesting, right? Because it also, of course, implies that God is capable, of, you know, that we're all accountable to God and, and that it could have said, you know, I can be relied on to punish you if you do this. And it doesn't say that. And I think that's interesting. It's not that that might not happen, but rather to say and to understand that it is in human nature to possibly do these things. That again, we come down to this very radical uh, and rigorous application of anti determinism, you know, of a non deterministic understanding of human personality, which means that despite the fact that our natural inclinations uh, may lead us in a certain direction, we are all capable, as painful as it may be, we are all capable of controlling our emotions and controlling ourselves. That doesn't mean we can stop doing certain things in terms of the emotions themselves, but at least we don't need to always act on them. And uh, I, 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 I know that very often when people commit criminal acts in their minds, they don't feel they're doing anything wrong. So that when the murderer pulls the trigger at that very moment. Uh, his emotions are driving him to do that. Generally speaking, we're looking at a, an emotional reaction and, and his emotions are telling him, this is fine, you're justified, this is all okay. And we're saying that doesn't really hold water. You, the, the argument of the devil made, made me do it, just does not, does not apply. Um, I feel like this might be a good place to stop this morning, and I'm going to pop in the arrow for next time. And even though we have another week to go, uh, let me know uh, one way or another uh, if you would like to continue with Achare Mot or if you'd like to go on to Kadoshim. Okay, so that's. Just let me know. And this is where we'll, this is where we're going to stop today. Stop. I, I kind of like to go on with Acharimot because usually they're combined Sidrot and um, we always focus on Kadoshim. Oh, we do? Okay. I mean, this year, we will have a chance to look at Kadoshim this year because they are separated, but I'm happy. I appreciate your sharing that and I'm happy to go on with Acharimot. Yeah, but it's pretty much all pretty much exactly the same except for just the list of who you should and shouldn't have relations with correct but there is rashi uh, there is some, yeah if there's some rashi that you know that makes some right something other than what we've already said sure but you know so there, we never get through all of kadoshim either so you this, know, this is that's old. true <laughs> also true well yeah. we, could, we could pick and choose some of the fun things at kadoshim there we go I'm going to stop the recording.